Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. The weather is quiet now, but that might not be the case later tonight and especially tomorrow as a big chunk of the country could see severe weather. That's why we've declared a severe weather alert day. Meteorologist Evan Hatter joins us now with the latest. Evan. That's right, Steve. A big chunk of the country and including many of us here in the mountains. In fact, everybody under the level two slight risk for severe weather as we head into the day tomorrow. We'll get to tomorrow in due time. First off, let's take you outside. What's going on now? Nothing to worry about right now. We're watching just a few fair weather clouds, some blue skies out at our high knob camera at UVA wise. Lower 70s into portions of southwest Virginia. Even the clouds starting to clear a little bit here in Hazard. Buffalo Mountain sitting at 82. Not too bad out there, though it is a little on the muggy side. Many of us into the mid 80s. How about Manchester and Monticello at 85, 84. Irvin, Somerset, London, and even down into Williamsburg. So it is mild and muggy around some parts of the mountains. It's a clean sweep around here. We still have in our far western sections a level one marginal risk for severe weather tonight, but tonight is not our main concern. It's what's developing already out to the west of us. That's a line of strong to severe storms already getting going along a cold front. That's the first of several waves could bring us the potential for severe weather as we head into the day tomorrow. So if you don't have it already, go ahead and download that WYMT weather app. Scan that code in the upper right hand corner of your screen. You'll be taken to a link where you can download that WYMT weather app. You'll get weather alerts right to your phone. Of course, our handmade forecast and updated radar imagery at your fingertips at all times, anywhere you have service. So upper 60s, low 70s tonight, mid 60s as we wake up in the morning with those showers and storms continuing. I've got the very latest on our main threats and when the main timing looks to be coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Evan, thank you. President Biden signed several bipartisan bills into law today that improves health care for veterans. As CBS's Natalie Brand explains, one of the new laws expands access to breast cancer screenings and is named after a veteran who recently died. Morning. CBS News spoke with Marine veteran Dr. Kate Hendricks Thomas less than six months before she lost her battle with stage four breast cancer, leaving behind her young son Matthew and her husband Shane. The radiologist said it looked like I'd been dipped in something. Hendricks Thomas learned of her diagnosis at age 38, more than a decade after returning home from Iraq, where she was exposed to toxic burn pits on base. Fellow Marine veteran Mindy Beyer has been closely tracking legislation named in her friend's honor, requiring the Department of Veterans Affairs to provide mammograms for those who served near burn pits or had other toxic exposures, regardless of symptoms, age, or family history. We hope that the message is getting out to veterans. If you have been serving, even if you weren't around burn pits, there's a possibility you were around some sort of toxic exposure. Please go earlier. Please check yourself out. The legislation is one of nine bills for veterans the president signed into law Tuesday. Because veterans are the backbone, the spine of who we are as a country. We owe them. We owe them big. This signing ceremony comes with pressure on Capitol Hill to still pass legislation to help an estimated 3.5 million veterans exposed to toxins in more recent conflicts. It took Hendricks Thomas three years to get her claim approved after it was initially denied. Kate was very proud to serve her country and I think that her message was all, would always be um, fight for your country but then fight for each other when you get back. It's a message advocates hope senators hear when they take a final vote on burn pit legislation expected later this week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. If the bill named honoring our pact passes in the Senate, it's expected to get a final vote in the House. Americans may soon have another option when it comes to COVID-19 vaccines. An FDA panel has voted in favor of emergency use authorization for a new COVID-19 vaccine from Novavax. Novavax's shot is a protein vaccine similar to traditional vaccines used for hepatitis B and shingles. The vaccine uses a protein that is mass produced in the lab. That's unlike the Pfizer and Moderna shots, which teaches the body to make the protein. Anything we can do to get people more comfortable to be able to accept these potentially life-saving medical products is something that we feel um, we uh, are compelled to do. A recent poll found 73% of Americans would like to see additional COVID-19 vaccines developed from a more traditional method. 
Manufacturing problems have held up Novavax's entry into the vaccine market. It's already approved in 41 other countries. Folks in Richmond celebrated cancer survivors with a drive-up celebration at the Baptist Health Hospital. June is National Cancer Survivor Month, and Baptist Health held drive-through events at many of their Kentucky hospitals to continue the fight. Allie Blake has more. In honor of National Cancer Survivor Month, Baptist Health Richmond held a drive through celebration for survivors, giving out flowers and smiles as the team encourages those to fight and those to keep living life to their fullest. Yeah, well, you know, of course, the pandemic has been tough, and I can imagine even tougher than those that are uh, immunocompromised and are on their journey through survivorship of cancer. So it's just a little bit of an extra special treat this year, getting to come out and see everybody come out. This is the second year that Baptist Health Richmond has put on the event. Mendy Blair says survivorship starts the moment they get the diagnosis, and just waking up each day is another step in the fight. I think survivor, you know, anybody, I don't know the textbook definition of it, but I can tell you a survivor is, is everybody that has the energy and the ability to fight and the willingness to move along in their journey each and every single day. Baptist Health Richmond says seeing the smiling faces of their patients that continue to fight make their job all worth it in the end. What makes uh, the healthcare team so motivated is to watch and you know wherever we can encourage. I think it just kind of helps us a little bit more and gives us a little more lift because we're trying to push along and fight with them. Baptist Health Richmond hopes to continue this event year after year and encourage those that are continuing to undergo the fight and those that are in remission. In Richmond, Allie Blake, WKYT. Baptist Health Richmond will also have a second drive through event that ends at 6 o'clock this evening. As prices at gas pumps climb to near $5 a gallon in much of the United States, the worst may still be to come. Oil prices are the biggest component affecting gas prices, and Goldman Sachs is now forecasting crude oil prices will average $140 a barrel this summer. That would mean gas prices could spike even higher in order to incentivize new production and discourage consumption. Oil analysts expect the national average price of gas to rise above five bucks a gallon in the next week or so. After a two-year-old Florida boy accidentally shot his back, his father in the back, the child's mom is facing a charge of manslaughter by culpable negligence and other counts. Marie Ayala is in custody after deputies were called to the family's Orlando home and found Reggie Mabry with a gunshot wound. He later died at the hospital. Three kids were home at the time. The five-year-old de told detectives the two-year-old shot their dad. In a news conference Monday, the Orange County Sheriff had this to say. The gun was not properly stored. Uh, in fact, it was easily accessible even to a two-year-old. And the result uh, is a tragedy, uh, again, in this community that no one really can comprehend. Ayala could face up to 15 years in prison if convicted on the manslaughter charge. Several professions are dealing with worker shortages in Kentucky with the teacher shortage among the most dire. Today, education leaders met in Frankfurt to discuss the ongoing problem. Kentucky Education Commissioner Dr. Jason Glass told lawmakers they need to prioritize keeping teachers and attracting more to the profession. He says more than 30,000 Kentucky teachers are at risk of leaving. The highest numbers are among new teachers and those nearing retirement. We have seen an increase in the use of emergency certifications uh, for unfilled positions, so that's another indication that our traditional pipeline isn't delivering enough teachers to, to meet the market. Dr. Glass adds factors like COVID-19 stress, added responsibilities, and low wages are contributing to the shortage. He outlined potential solutions, including implementing teaching career pathway programs, giving districts more recruitment resources, removing barriers for obtaining certifications, and paying higher wages. All-American basketball player Johnny Cox has had a storied career. He won a state championship at Hazard High School in 1955 and a national championship at the University of Kentucky in 1958. Now 85 years old and still here in Hazard, Cox's impact has expanded beyond the basketball court. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox catches up with him. From an All-American collegiate career playing for a Hall of Fame coach, 
back to the mountains of eastern Kentucky. Johnny Cox has found home in Hazard again at the Perry County Senior Center. Yeah, it's just a, this is a place where a lot of, a lot of the older people gather, senior citizens. A place where he can find support from others his age. You know, we all help him now, that, you know, because he's having a hard time more his age and stuff. While also looking back on his years playing for Hall of Fame UK coach Adolf Rupp. Uh, being with him is a memory. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was something to be around for, this, for, for three or four years. And memories others at the Senior Center enjoy hearing every day, learning more about the life of a man many have grown to appreciate having around. It, it's awesome because we're, we all know him as, you know, a big basketball player, and, and he, you know, he's just, he's just a nice person. He credits his upbringing in the mountains for making him tough enough to play at a program like Kentucky basketball. He grew up in coal country, working construction to help provide for his family. It didn't bother me none, having to work, because I worked, worked whenever I was growing up. It was, it was all work hard for basketball. Well, you got to make your grades, too. You, you have to go, go to school. And while he hopes to attend more Kentucky basketball games, it will always be the mountains that Cox calls home. In Perry County, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. 2023 will mark the 65th anniversary of the Cats 1958 National Championship season. Always enjoy seeing Johnny around town. Coming up on Mountain News at 530, planning a big trip this summer, but unsure whether to buy travel insurance. We'll get the experts take and how you could already be covered and not know it. And it feels and looks like summer around the mountains this afternoon and evening. The very latest on our severe weather threats coming up on the other side of this break. WYMT News app offers alerts on breaking stories as they happen, customized to the categories you choose. 